Hello, and welcome to SoberCast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting SoberCast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. My name is Peter. I am a, an alcoholic, and I call myself a recovered alcoholic because the the obsession to drink has been removed, and the uh, subtle insanity that takes me back to the first drink um, is in remission because I am still an alcoholic. I may be recovered, but I am still an alcoholic. <clears throat> okay, so. Chapter working with others. I'm going to give some background to start with. Okay, so um, there's it's very it's it's very important that I do this because <clears throat> I'm an alcoholic. Okay, and this book Alcoholics Anonymous was written by alcoholics, and they're sharing their experience of alcoholism and recovery from alcoholism in this big book, and that's very important to know. <clears throat> One thing that my that my 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 sponsor wrote in my book when he when he bound it was just inside the inside cover. He said we drift we drifted into compromise and called it tolerance. And what that means is that we compromised the program of Alcoholics Anonymous because some of us thought that everybody could recover in Alcoholics Anonymous. And we went through a period of time when Alcoholics Anonymous almost disappeared in the 1960s. <clears throat> and what we have in Alcoholics Anonymous is a singleness of purpose. And I think this is very, very important, particularly today. Because we have, we have lots and lots of stuff online and stuff and whatever. And there's some folks out there that are not identifying with what they are. <clears throat> now... I, I, I was I was I was searching around yesterday for some stuff, and I found a, a wonderful little talk by Bill Wilson that's about fifteen minutes, who talks about the singleness of purpose in Alcoholics Anonymous, and he he also said, like me, you know, that we don't deal with pure alcoholics in Alcoholics Anonymous. You know, there's no such thing. I don't think there's anything such thing as a pure alcoholic. I didn't just drink. I used some other stuff as well, but I was never addicted to that stuff because it never actually did. It, it, it didn't do what alcohol did, put it that way. And my reaction to alcohol is very different from other people. Now, <clears throat> one of the things about chapter working with others is it talks about a 12-step call to start with. Half The first half of the chapter is about a 12-step 12 12-step 12 call. The second part is about sponsorship. Now, we don't do 12-step calls very much anymore because most of the people who come to Alcoholics Anonymous come through treatment centers or some other, some other method that we don't actually go out and, and look for alcoholics anymore. And if you look at the, the 12th tradition on page 60, and I like the fact that it's actually on page 60, all by itself at the top of the page, because the first 11 steps are on page 59. And break down the 12th, tradition, the 12th step, and it says, having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, the first 11, we tried to carry this message to alcoholics and to practice these principles in all our affairs. So. As an alcoholic, my primary purpose is to carry the message to the alcoholic that still suffers. Now, <clears throat> that's been difficult during COVID because we lost a lot of places. But I do know that one of our members in PPG, PPG Can, is actually now visiting a, a prison again. So we're starting to go out and we're starting to look for alcoholics and carry this message outside of the group, which is what we're supposed to do. That's our primary purpose. Bill Wilson said our chief responsibility to the newcomer 
is an adequate, adequate presentation of the program. If he does nothing or argues, we do nothing but maintain our own sobriety. If he starts to move ahead even a little with an open mind, and this is very important, then we break our necks to help in every way we can. <clears throat> now, the outside issues that I used allowed me to drink more. I wasn't interested in stuff that didn't that, that, that didn't enhance my drinking. I can remember many years ago when I used to go, I was on ships and I used to end up in Portsmouth and I used to go up, we used to have the weekend in Portsmouth and I used to go on the train and I used to go up to London to Ronnie Scott's and the 100 Club and the Marquee Club and all that kind of stuff. And I used to use Purple Hearts so that I could drink all night, basically speed. But it was because I could drink all night. You know, my experience of cocaine is that I, I take a couple of lines of cocaine and I'm sober and I can start drinking again and I can drink some more. I even did what some overeaters did, which is make myself sick so I could get some more in. But I'm not an overeater. I'm an alcoholic. An alcoholic. <clears throat> and the other thing we need to understand also before we go into the working with others, is that alcohol is not a drug. <clears throat> that's a, that's a, that is a misnomer. That's happened by, basically it's happened a long time ago by a treatment centre that only had one van and took everybody to Alcoholics Anonymous. And we're told, oh, they, they don't care. They just, you identify yourself as an alcoholic and you'll be okay. Well, that was our mistake in the 1960s, that we didn't check to see that the people coming into Alcoholics Anonymous were alcoholics. Because there's lots of other fellowships out there that, 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 that look after other things. You know, there's Cocaine Anonymous, Heroin Anonymous, there's Narcotics Anonymous, there's Emotions Anonymous, there's Overeaters Anonymous, there's Gamblers Anonymous. What was interesting about Gamblers Anonymous, it was the first one that was that was founded after, after Alcoholics Anonymous. And the founder of uh, Gamblers Anonymous was an alcoholic. But because he concentrated on, on gambling and not, not alcoholism, his alcoholism, he ended up dying drunk. You see, alcoholism is a progressive illness even when we're not drinking. And that is very important to understand about alcoholism as well. Now... In the big book, there's a doctor's opinion, and the doctor's opinion is that what in the, what is in this big book is very important. That's his opinion. But he has a theory, and the theory is that we have an allergic reaction to alcohol that is different from other people. It differentiates us from other people. Now, Dr. Silkworth, who wrote the do that doctor's opinion, treated drug addicts and alcoholics. Now, if it was the same, he would, he would have said it was the same. But from his experience, alcoholics are different from drug addicts. And from my experience, alcoholics are different from drug addicts. <clears throat> I, have a, I have a definition of alcoholism from a dictionary. Not from Dr. Silkworth or anybody in Alcoholics Anonymous, but this is from a dictionary. And it reads like this. Alcoholism is a chronic disorder categorized by repeated excessive use of alcoholic beverages and decreased ability to function socially and vocationally and pot is potentially fatal. Or a compulsive excessive consumption of alcoholic beverages and dependence upon alcohol leading to a potentially fatal condition. Okay, So in order to be an alcoholic, you've got to drink. Alcoholics Anonymous, like Bill Wilson said, Alcoholics Anonymous is for drunks. Now, we don't care what else. We don't care what else you suffer from. You can be a heroin addict and a drunk. That's okay. I know people who are cocaine addicts and are alcoholics also. And when they come to Alcoholics Anonymous, they identify as alcoholic. When they go to Cocaine Anonymous, they identify as a cocaine addict. But they don't mix the two up because they're different. They're very different. <clears throat> so 
at the beginning of the book in page 18, you see, I said, when we study the big book, we got to read the black part, okay? This is important. So we read the black part of the book and not the white crap in the background. And on page 18, there's some italics, and it was very expensive to put italics in the big book, okay? And so it's anything in italics in the big book is in neon. Now, I, I, I come from the big book because this is our basic text in Alcoholics Anonymous, and this shows us how to recover from alcoholism in, in, in AA. This was what they're putting down their experience of how they recovered from alcoholism. Now, the big book has been, has been adopted, and the 12 steps have been adopted and modified, and the 12 traditions have been adopted and modified by other fellowships. But in one particular fellowship, which is which is Cocaine Anonymous, I will read you a disclaimer, if I can find it, about our 12 traditions. I know I'm going on about this a little bit, but it's very important to understand where we're coming from. In, in the, the 12 traditions of Cocaine Anonymous, it says the 12 traditions are reprinted with permission of Alcoholics Anonymous World Service Incorporated. Permission to reprint and adapt the 12 traditions and the 12 steps does not mean AA is affiliated with this program. AA is a program of recovery from alcoholism. Use of the traditions in connection with programs and activities which are patterned after AA, but which address other problems, does not imply otherwise. So in other words, we, we are not associated. We've allowed them to use and adapt the 12 steps and the 12 traditions and our big book to their needs. And we stick to what we do. And I believe that the reason why Alcoholics Anonymous is still alive after 83 years is the fact that we have stuck to our singleness of purpose. We don't care what else you suffer from, whether you suffer from neurotic stuff or whether you've got whether you've got sex problems or food problems or drug problems, we don't care. Do you qualify as an alcoholic? And what's the qualification for an alcoholic? Well, when you, when, when you want to, you cannot stop entirely. That means forever. Or, or if when drinking, you lose control over how much you drink, you are probably, which means almost certainly, an alcoholic. You see, the, the words in the big book, you've got, to, you've got to actually understand the meaning in many, many places, probably. Now, on page 18, it says, but the ex-problem drinker has found this solution in this book, who is properly, and this, this ties in perfectly with working with others, with this solution, who is properly, and it's on page 18, folks. It's two pages, it's one page, two pages in to the actual telling you how to work the 12 steps. It's right at the beginning of There is a Solution, which is just after Bill's story. Bill's, Bill's story is a 12-step call, and it is mirrored in working with others. The first half of Bill's story is his drinking story. The second half of his story is, is, is what he's like now, and the middle bit is how he got sober. And that's what we're supposed to share when we, when we, do, when we do a, a talk in AA, which is... <clears throat> What I, what, what I was like, not it, what I was like, what happened, and what I am like now, and why I'm like that. Okay, so <clears throat> it says he can generally win the entire confidence of another alcoholic in a few hours. Until such an understanding is reached, little or nothing can be accomplished. Okay, now it's the confidence piece that's important. You see, when, when, my, when my, my sponsor, Billy, first came to see me, when I made the call to Alcoholics Anonymous, when I knew I was dying, and I know I was insane, and my sponsor, Billy, came to see me, I was sitting there in a pair of jeans that hadn't been washed for about 18 months, and I was, sit, I was sitting in a room that was, a dis, that was destroyed because I'd been living in it for about 18 months, <clears throat> sitting by a fire in December, Shape with there was wasn't much of a fire by the way because I couldn't I couldn't afford I couldn't afford the, the, the fuel. I was sitting there shaking and puking, and he was sitting there, and he had a pair of slacks on, and he had a jacket on, and he had a he had a tie, and he had a big book, 
and he started to talk about his drinking. And that's all he said. That's all he did. I know he had a big book, but he just sat there and he talked about his drinking. He talked about how he drank. And I'm going, oh, I drink like that. Yeah, I drink like that. Yeah, that's happened to me, Billy. I drink like that. And then he started, then he said, well, I came to Alcoholics Anonymous and I found out I was an alcoholic and I was suffering from an illness. And he described the illness to me. He hasn't opened the big book yet. And he described his experience of the illness of Alcoholics Anonymous. And I'm going, oh, alcoholism, about how when he's drinking, he loses control over how much he drinks pretty much every time. Not always, but pretty much every time. And always over drinks. Always drinks more than he intends to. And I go, I do that, Billy. And then other times when he's drinking to oblivion because he just wants his head to shut up. And I say, I do that too, Billy. And then he told me about stuff that he did in the early days of his drinking where he would take something like speed so that he could carry on drinking. And I said, I did that, Billy. And it's because I could carry on drinking. And he talked about making himself sick to drink some more. And I said, oh, I did that too. And he said he didn't actually like the, the, like the, the, the taste of alcohol, certain alcohol, but he liked what it did. And I said, well, I don't, I hate gin, but gin's the cheapest thing I can buy. And I've got to tell you, the first drink I take in the morning, uh, and it is in the morning, is I've got to catch it. I've got to use a glass because I've got to catch it because it always comes up. I take a first mouthful, goes down, comes back up again. And I catch it in the glass and I swallow it back down again. Now, you've got to have stamina to be an alcoholic. <clears throat> And by telling me all of those things and I identifying with Billy, I had confidence that when he started to tell me about the 12 steps and when he got to the God bit, I I didn't like that at all because I'd been brought up in a Catholic school and I'd had God up to here. And uh, however, I had been seeking other ways, other spiritual ways, drunk mostly, um i i <laughs> there was a period of time when i considered zen zen buddhism uh but i was taking acid at the time so it wasn't really a good idea um but that was the 1960s for you that was how it was but um <clears throat> i had confidence that once he started to talk about this stuff that i could sort of lay aside my prejudice because I trusted that what he was telling me could fix me like him. And he was sitting there shiny with a big smile on his face. His eyes were alive. And I was sitting there shaking and puking and in a hell of a mess. And there was a, a, a distinct difference between him and me. He was a recovered alcoholic and I was an active alcoholic. But I had confidence because of, of, of his description of his alcoholism that what he was going to tell me about the solution to alcoholism in this book was going to work for me. And I was going to end up looking like Billy. And I wanted that desperately because I was dying and I knew I was. And it carries on. The next part of this, until such an understanding is reached, little or nothing can be accomplished. So there's an understanding between the person making the 12-step call and the person who he's calling upon. Now, I've tried in my arrogance to 12-step people other than drunks. And I was told that was spiritual arrogance because you're an alcoholic, you're not a drug addict. You're not an overeater. You're an alcoholic. And when I start to talk about alcoholism to someone who's not an alcoholic, they won't get it. They really won't get it. Only alcoholics get what we talk about when we're drinking. Only alcoholics get that you catch you catch it in the glass and you drink it back down again. Only alcoholics think about hiding, hiding booze. Only alcoholics hide the empties. Why would I hide empties? I mean, that's crazy. I had a garage full. It was crazy. Then it says, 
after after the italics, it says that the man who's making the approach has had the same difficulty. Okay. This is important. For everyone that, that, that picks up this big book in any fellowship, they need to understand that. That the man who's making the approach has had the same difficulty. Now, some of us have had two or maybe even three difficulties. And that we, we do qualify for other fellowships. But when we're in AA, we identify as alcoholics. And it's important because we have a singleness of purpose. Now, if anybody can come to an open meeting of Alcoholics Anonymous, we, we don't care. You can come to a meeting of Alcoholics Anonymous as a, as a, a visitor. You don't participate, but you can observe. And we are very welcome that you do observe because we study the big book in our group and we like people to come along and find out how to do that so that you can apply it to your own problem. And we will also find people who have your problem too. We know we have contacts with all sorts of fellowships. We've got contacts with, 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 with DAA. We've got contacts with Cocaine Anonymous. We've got contacts with Heroin Anonymous. We've got contacts with all sorts of people. So that he obviously knows what he's talking about, and he's hold the portman, shout that the prospect is a man with a real answer. That is no, there is no attitude of holier than thou, nothing but the sincere desire to be helpful. So we go into working with others. I know that was a long preamble, but I got, but I, 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 I'm, I'm, we need to do it because we need to understand what we're doing here. You see, if you start off, if you start off with a with an untruth then there's a strong possibility that that, that, that princi spiritual principles will not work. And there has to be the, this, 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 this interlock between the person 12-stepping and the person that, do it, that we are 12-stepping. Now, this chapter, chapter 7, is interesting because up until this point in the book, they've been telling us about their experience. We did this. This is what we did. This is what we found out. This is we, 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 all the way through. But now they start to talk about you because we've gone through the 12 steps or the 11, first 11 steps in this book, and now they're talking about the 12th step. And so they're assuming that we've taken the first 11 steps as laid out in this book, and we are now recovered alcoholics. And they're talking to us on the same level now. That they're talking to us like we are one of them who wrote the book. And it also carries on afterwards into the last chapter, chapter 11, um, particularly at the end where it says, we know what you are thinking. <laughs> and they do that all the way through the book. They're called drunk traps. We know what you're thinking. So it says practical experience shows that nothing Nothing will um, so much ensure immunity from drinking as intensive work with other alcoholics. Now, that has been taken in Alcoholics Anonymous. I'm going to be critical of AA now. Is, is That's been taken to mean being in service in Alcoholics Anonymous, being on committees and going to intergroup and going to region and getting in committees and working with other alcoholics in AA. That's not what it means. That's not 12-step work. 12-step work is outside of the group. <clears throat> the best way to go to 12-step group, 12-stepping, uh, is to be part of the, part of the uh, telephone responders deal. That's what I used to do in the UK, and it was real good. And I did it in France as well I was in the, uh, when I was in camp. Came across some interesting people. None, none of them seemed to want to stop drinking. However, I came across some interesting people. Um, it says it works when other activities fail. Well, where's that come from? Well, that comes from Bill's story. Bill knew about this before, before long before Alcoholics Anonymous. You see, in Bill's story, um, On page 14, he has a spiritual awakening. Okay, he's taken up a mountain by God. Lifted up as though a great clean wind of a mountain blew through and through. Now, on the next page, this is very alcoholic, okay? 
he's been taken up a mountain by God. Okay, this is this is kind of like this hot flash. A few weeks later, it says here, my wife and I abandoned ourselves with enthusiasm the, the idea of helping our colleagues to a solution to their problems. I was fortunate my old business associates remained skeptical for a year and a half, during which time I find little work. I was not too well at the time and was plagued by waves of self-pity and resentment. I mean, most normal folks, not alcoholics, most normal folks after being taken up a mountain by God would be walking down the main street with a tambourine telling everybody about it. Not us. That was yesterday. You see, we suffer from alcoholism, ISM, and incredibly short memory. And here he is. He's full of self-pity. Oh, you know, but he's been taken up a mountain by God. Oh, my God. You know, that's like, but that's alcoholic. And then it says, sometimes nearly drove me back to drink. But soon found that when all other measures failed, working with another alcoholic would save the day. He, in the first six months of his, of his sobriety, he didn't succeed with anybody. But he remained sober. And he remained sober long enough to get to Dr. Bob. And before he got to Dr. Bob, he, Dr. Silkworth said, to, he went to see Dr. Silkworth and said, I'm, I'm, I'm quitting this because nothing's happening. And Dr. Silkworth said to him, said, what are you doing? How are you doing it? And he said, oh, I'm telling about my spiritual experience. He said, where yeah, but you forget what I told you the second time you were in this hospital, that you suffered from an allergic reaction to alcohol, which meant that you overdrank every time. And that you couldn't stop starting again because you have a mental blank spot or something means some uh, strange insanity. The book comes many, many different types of, of, of insanity all the way through, but the strange mental blank spot, and that means that you, you start drinking without even thinking. You, you drink even when you don't, you don't remember how you started. And he said, you've got to tell them you knew that before you found the spiritual experience. He did. He knew that at least six months before he found, he found a spiritual answer. And at this time, Bill is the only person in the world, when he goes to see Dr. Bob, that has the two pieces. He has Dr. Silkworth's idea about alcoholism, and he has, he has Dr. Jung's um, idea that there is a spiritual, uh, a spiritual solution to alcoholism. And what Dr. Silkworth says to him, he said, you've got to tell him about the illness first before you tell him about the solution. And Dr. Bob was the first, first guy he did it with. And this is how this chapter is. This chapter talks about alcoholism first. And it talks, it gives us, it said, people say, oh, I can never do 12-step, I, I couldn't do 12-step work. The first half of this chapter is a script. It tells you, number one, where to find them. Doctors, ministers, priests, or hospitals. That's good in 2022 as it is in 1939. They're still out there, folks. A whole bunch of alkies. They'll be only glad to assist you. We're a nuisance. Alcoholics are a nuisance. We, we, take, we clog up doctor's places. We clog up emergency rooms. We clog up all... We end up going to confession all the time if we're a Catholic, what's that, and crying in the confessional, all this kind of stuff. It's nuts. They get fed up with us because we keep on doing. They say, well, don't drink. Okay, I'm not going to drink. Next week, we're, next day, we're drunk again. What are you thinking of? They just get fed up with us. So they're quite happy to have somebody take, them off, take us off their hands. And it says, it says, ministers, doctors are competent. You must learn, you can learn much from them, but it happens because of your own drinking experience. You can be uniquely helpful to alcoholics. Uniquely. Now, I, I say that for any fellowship, that if you suffer from overeating, you can be uniquely helpful to someone who has an eating problem. If you have a drug addict, then you can be uniquely helpful to other drug addicts. And that, I, I believe that to be true that there's no crossover here. And I think it's important that and I, I go back to saying that we are 83 years old in Alcoholics Anonymous since the big book was about almost to the week, almost to the week. It was in April. It was published almost to the week. 83 years, almost to the day. And I believe that's why we survived. <clears throat> Dr. Bill, Bill Wilson said 
in, in a in a, um, a grapevine article, he said, "Stick to thy last, shoemaker. Stick to thy last." Which means stick to repairing shoes. Don't try and repair trousers. That's a tailor's job. <clears throat> when you discover a prospect for Alcoholics Anonymous, find out all you can about him. They talk about going through the family. And then on the next page, they say it's not a good idea. <laughs> they spend a whole, t- whole page about going through the family. And then on, page, <laughs> then on page 91, they say, no, it's not a good idea. Because the family probably want the alcoholic want the the alcoholic to be sober more than his family more than he does you know the family is oh they're anxious you know they've got to get this guy fixed you know and i'm i've even i've even um been to a family one time one time when the 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 alcohol so-called alcoholic didn't even seem like an alcoholic they just seemed to be like someone who just liked drinking that they could stop and add control over how much they drank but they just liked drinking. <laughs> and then it says that, 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 that they talk about an approach for a doctor or institution is the, best, is the better bet. Well, yes, that is a better bet. And it says if your man needs hospitalization, he should have it. Not forcibly unless he's violent. But that's, this is a detox. This is not treatment. This is talking about detox, which is 48 to 72 hours and maybe five or six days in hospital okay your detox alcohol is one of the most dangerous things things to detox from okay a heroin addict gets very sick when he detoxes from heroin a a a uh, any any other thing detoxing from any other substance other than alcohol they get very sick but they don't die alcoholics die when they're when they're detoxing because it goes out very, very quick, and our brain goes into into trauma, and we end up with having a grand mal seizure. So we have epileptic fits. Okay, alcoholics have fits, <clears throat> and we die. Our hearts stop sometimes. Okay, so it's it's important that some some if you've been drinking long and deep then you probably need some kind of detox. And what Dr. Silkworth used to do was knock you out for 48 hours. And Dr. Bob did the same thing. Knock them out for 48 hours so they don't get the DTs. i got to tell you, DTs, DTs is a trip. I, 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 I had them. I, I, they were a shock. i got to tell you, two days after I got sober, or two days after I stopped drinking, didn't get sober, stopped drinking, I've been chased around the house and there was stuff under my skin and there was stuff under the carpet and there was, oh my God. See your man alone if possible. Absolutely. First thing you do is you find a place where you can be alone. Because he needs to listen to your story. And then it says, first engage in general general conversation. After a while, turn the talk to a phase of some phase of drinking. And then it says, tell him about enough about your drinking habits, symptoms, experiences to encourage him to speak of himself. And that's exactly what Billy did. He's got the book with him, but he hasn't opened up the book yet. Opening up the big book doesn't come until the end of the 12th step. <clears throat> and then it says, when you see that when you when he sees you know all about the drinking game, commence to describe yourself as an alcoholic. That's exactly what Billy did. I think Billy read this chapter before he came to see me. I do know of people who actually read this chapter, the first half of this chapter, when they're going on a 12-step call. Again and again and again. And I heard this a long time ago uh, with a guy that was in the U.S. Navy. And they were going on a 12-step call to get somebody who was, who was standing on a bridge somewhere. who was going to jump drunk and he was going to jump, jump off this bridge. And they went in this Jeep and he said they gave his, his sponsor gave him a torch and a big book. And he said, go to go to page 91, start reading. And as they're driving to the to, to this to, to this guy that they're going to they've they go on the 12 step call. He's reading this chapter. This first half. Then it says, if you're satisfied, he's a real alcoholic. First of all, we've got to understand that he's if he's an alcoholic or not. And the real alcoholic is on page 21 of the big book. There's a description. It goes on to page 22. 
And I got to tell you, I've done most of those things. I ticked most of those boxes. But even if you got one of those, you're probably alcoholic. You don't have to have all of them. One of them, because normal, normal drinkers don't do that. <laughs> don't do that stuff. They just don't. I mean, my brother is a normal drinker, okay? He likes a glass of port after meal. He has a glass of port, and he might be sitting in front of the TV, and he might have another glass of port. Halfway down that glass of port, he decides that he's had enough, and I've even seen him put cling film over the glass and put it in the fridge for tomorrow to stop it evaporating. I mean, that's, that's crazy. I know. What are you doing? Oh, I'm starting, I'm, so I'm starting to feel it. Well, that's right. Yes, of course you are. That's the point. You know? Okay. <laughs> so, but he's got a different reaction to me. You see, uh, alcohol energizes me. It puts him to sleep. That's the difference. And then it says, don't at this stage refer to this book unless you've seen it and wishes to discuss it. Well, I'd seen it. It was, uh, it was in, Billy's, in, Billy, uh, in Billy's lap. He was sort of holding on to it all the time. But I, didn't, I had no idea what it was. And careful not to brand him an alcoholic. Let him draw his own conclusion. So one of the things that I was told early on in AA was, did anybody tell you you were an alcoholic? Or did you decide from yourself? Because as uh, Dr. Paul Ollinger used to say, Dr. Paul is in the big book. It used to be called Dr. Alcoholic Addict, but now it's called um, Acceptance is the Answer. But he said that alcoholism enters through the ear. You get, the, you get to be an alcoholic by listening to another alcoholic. And that the infection enters through the ear. And I did exactly that with Billy. And it was copybook. And ever since then, I've done exactly the same thing. Is I don't look at, I don't even look at the book. I open it up. I tell them about my drinking. If they start nodding, going, "Yeah, that's me. That's me. That's me." I'm pretty sure they're alcoholic. <clears throat> Continue to speak of alcoholism as an illness, a fatal malady. Basically, what we do is we give the prospect a killer case of alcoholism on a twelve-step call. Now, people say, "Oh, you mustn't frighten the newcomer." Yes, you must. Because the more hopeless they feel, the better. As it says in this chapter, they are more likely to, to follow your suggestions if they are. We tend to wrap newcomers up in cotton wool in Alcoholics Anonymous. Not a good idea. This is a race. 12 step in somebody is a race. Because very often, they've relapsed and stopped and relapsed and stopped and relapsed and stopped. One of my questions with the relapser is, how long was it from the time you quit to the time you started drinking again? Two weeks. Okay, we've got two weeks to work the 12 steps. A weekend. Okay, so we've got a weekend to work the 12 steps. Now, we don't do it thoroughly. We do it, this is emergency stuff, okay? We go back through the book afterwards. We go back through the book afterwards. We don't do go through the book. We don't have time to go through the book. The book says, let him read the book in the meantime. At the end of the 12-step call, yeah, that's fine. I, I'll give him a couple of pages to look at, but I'll come back tomorrow. Because my, 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 um, my job on the 12-step call is to give him a killer case of alcoholism. And there are instances in this book, not just in this chapter, but there are instances in this book, in the stories in the book, in other places, more about alcoholism, etc., where <clears throat> Fred is a classic. In, in uh, more about alcoholism, we have Fred, whose gen name was actually Harry Brick, by the way. Um, and he said... Okay, well, what you guys have told me about alcoholism, well, that's, that's okay. I mean, I didn't go as far as you guys. I'll be okay. I can do this myself. So they went, okay, well, maybe you can, maybe you can't. But, and as they left, they said, but if you have an alcoholic mind, you will drink again. It's not a matter of if, it's, it's when. Okay, and then they left. They didn't even tell him about the solution. 
but they gave him a killer case of alcoholism. So that when he did drink again, which he did, he suddenly thought, oh, I remembered when my brain cleared, I remembered what those guys from Alcoholics Anonymous said, that they prophesied that I would drink again. And I did, and more. And that's the point, is we plant the seed. Whether they take it or not, we plant the seed of the illness of alcoholism. That it's progressive, and it is fatal. Eventually. One of, the, one of the things that I realized about the fatality of alcoholism is that it takes an awful long time for us to die of the effects, the, the, the effects of alcohol. We generally die by our own hand or an accident or violence of some kind. <clears throat> Make it plain is no obligation to you that you hope only you will try to help other alcoholics when he escapes his own difficulties. On the 12 step call, on the first time, I remember saying, Thank you, come and see me, Billy. And he said, He said, Don't thank me. He said, I'm, I'm staying sober today because I'm doing this today. And later on, he gave me a little blue card, which was in my wallet for about six months, and I gave it away and I got a new one. And I don't have my wallet with me now because the, the new one in my wallet is sort of maybe 39 years old. It's in two parts. It says, whenever anyone, whenever anyone asks for help, I want the hand of AA to be there. And that's what Billy gave me because that's what he was. He was the hand of AA when he came to see me. And he said, if he's not interested, it, said, um, if you're, it, tells us, it even tells us the attitude to take on the 12-step call. Sane, quiet, and full of human understanding. Maybe you've disturbed him about the question of alcoholism. This is all to the good. The more hopeless he feels, the better. He's more likely to follow your suggestions. And then on page 96, it says, do not be discouraged if your prospect does not respond at once. The point is that you've laid the seed. By giving him a killer case of alcoholism, you've laid the seed. And if, if what I do is that I give them my phone number, but I also ask if they're willing to give me theirs. Some of them are, some of them aren't. But if they're willing to give me theirs, and I don't hear from them for two or three months, I'll phone them up and say, how, how are you doing? How are you? You doing okay? <clears throat> it says, try again. You're sure to find someone desperate enough to accept with eagerness what you offer. Find it a waste of time to keep chasing a man who cannot or will not work with you. Don't waste your time. If you leave such a person alone, he may become convinced he cannot recover by himself. To spend too much time in any one situation, with some, uh, to deny some other alcoholic an opportunity to live and be happy. One of our fellowship failed entirely the first half dozen prospects, and that was Bill Wilson. He, he often said that if he continued to work with him, he might be deprived of many others who have since recovered of their chance. Suppose you're making the second visit. So here's the second visit. It says, having had the experience yourself, you can give him much practical advice about how to work the 12 steps. This is now about sponsorship. So we've done a 12-step call, and all you've got to do in the first, from, from page 91, from page 91 to 96, those six pages, all you've got to do is you read that, and it's a script. It tells you the attitude to take. It tells you how you're supposed to show up. It tells you what to say and how to say it and to let him talk as much as he wants because I want to know what his life is like. I want to know um, how I can put myself in his shoes so that I can, take, so that I can help him to take, go through the 12 steps. In, in the... It's very interesting. There was a um, there was a thing um, that, that in the other day when we were in ag we agnostics that on page fifty we agnostics it talks about power. It talks about power one two three four five six times. It talks about power, and each one of those except for the last one is in capitals. Okay, so there's a capital P. Now, in a convention in English writing, a capital P means that we're talking about 
a power greater than ourselves, God, if, if is a good word to call it, because it's got a capital. It's associated with God. But the last one, it's got a little p. It says we found a new power, peace, happiness, and sense of direction flowed into them. If we go to page 30, 132, we'll see what the power is. At the bottom of page 132, two lines up, we have recovered and been given the power to help others. And that's where it happens in the 12-step call. And that's where it happens when we take somebody through the 12 steps. But we've got to have, we've got to have the experience. You see, if you're having the experience yourself, they are saying that we've worked the two, first 11 steps already and then it says on page 100 which is really important there's a paragraph there that says both you and the new man must walk day to day in the path of spiritual progress so once they're through the 12 steps and you're now a sponsor there's no hierarchy in alcoholics anonymous that we're all now the same we are now shoulder to shoulder doing the same thing because what we do is we live life one day at a time we have spiritual disciplines, spiritual disciplines in Alcoholics Anonymous, step 10, 11, and 12, which allow us to be free from alcoholism. And it's the mental peace that we're free from. A daily reprieve. <clears throat> and there's some guides, there's some guides about saying, you know, if you've had domestic problems then you can be helpful to the, if you've solved your domestic problems, you can be helpful to your protege. Uh, my answer to that is if you haven't, don't try. We have to complete, we, we must continue to use our experience. If we don't have any experience of a particular, of a particular thing or particular um, problem that they have, then we go find someone that has. I've got a, I've got a network of people in Alcoholics Anonymous that have had all sorts of problems that I can phone up or send an email to and say, have you come across this? I've never come across this before. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. Oh, I know somebody that does. And then it says at the, on page 103, it says, after all, our problems were of our own making. Bottles were only a symbol. Besides, we've stopped fighting anything or anyone we have to. Now, that to me is, a, is an order. Let's let's just finish on this on the last on the last one page 164. <clears throat> last part, this paragraph here says our book is meant to be suggestive only. Oh, it's only a suggestion. Oh, that's all okay. If you look up suggestion in the in in the dictionary, it'll tell you it's a subtle form of command. Okay, so if you want to recover from alcoholism, you you've got to use the book. We realize we know only a little. Oh, they only knew a little. No, no, they don't, they talk, take, don't take it out of context. They don't know what's going to happen in the future. They don't know what's going to happen in our lives, but they know how to recover from alcoholism. Okay? A lot of people take that out of, out of context. You can't take it out of context in the book. A vision for you is about the future, your future as a, as a member of Alcoholics Anonymous carrying the message to other people. That's what it's all about. Then it says, God will constantly disclose more to you and to us. We're all walking shoulder to shoulder on this path of happy destiny. Ask him in your morning meditation what you can do each day for the man who's still sick. The answers will come if your own house is in order, but obviously you cannot transmit something you haven't got. See to it. That's not a suggestion. See to it that your relationship with him is right. Your relationship with this power greater than ourselves, God, as we understand God. And great events will come to pass for you and countless others. I, I can tell you that that is true because carrying the message to, our, to another alcoholic is the juice. It's uh, my friend, my friend Margaret says, says it's the juice. It's where, it's where the, the joy is, you know, happy, joyous and free. Yeah. But the joy is in, in helping others. And I did, I did it in the first, first to stay sober myself. But then in the end, I'm doing it because 
It's just great to watch somebody change in front of your eyes. It's not my power. All I am is the messenger. But I've been given that message. I've been given that power by this power greater than myself to, to carry. And But when, when I see, when they work the 12 steps, okay, I can guide them through the 12 steps, but they have to have an experience of it, a personal experience, which is one of the reasons why I don't open the book on a 12-step call because I don't want to read someone else. I can only talk about my own experience. But to watch somebody change, to watch the power of God in their lives, when I don't often see it in my own, that's where it is. That's where I see this power greater than me. And, and this, this is, I've got to tell you, it's, it's a trip. And, and I, I'm, I, I am trudging the road of happy destiny. I've got to tell you, this has been a wonderful journey and there's still more to come, you know. And I believe uh, I, I live life one day at a time. I don't stay sober one day at a time. I've, been, I've, had, the, I've had the obsession taken away for today. But I know it comes back because it did once. I know it comes back that once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic. So I am I'm recovered today, but I am an alcoholic. And if I drink, I'll lose control of how much I drink. So I, I'm going to wrap it up there. I didn't do much in the book. I was hammering on a little bit about being on a being on a, a bit of a bit of a soapbox there, but there you go. That's one of those things. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm I'm passionate. I am passionate about the big book. And I'm passionate about alcoholics anonymous and I love being sober. Thank you. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad-free, and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self-supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit Sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.